boys and girls, all for a whole lot less. At the Ross Shoe Event, yes for less. Tonight, several developing stories as we come on the air. The storms tonight and the flash flood emergency playing out right now. The high water rescues, neighborhoods submerged, families rescued by boat. Tens of millions at risk tonight from D.C. up through Philadelphia and New York. Also tonight, the secret recording of the president, Amorosa, who went from the apprentice to advisor in the West Wing, now revealing her secret recordings from inside the White House. You will hear the conversation in the Situation Room with Chief of Staff John Kelly. And tonight, we now hear the conversation with the president. Two major air scares, the new one just today, a man stealing a jet, and authorities say flying it right into his home, family members inside. And in Seattle tonight, authorities coming before the cameras today. How did that airport worker steal a plane and take off in this post 9-11 world? Fighter jets scrambled the recordings, what he said in the air before crashing. The stand your ground case tonight, a white customer angry with a black couple over where they parked. The black father pushing back. The father was then shot and killed. At first, no charges. Authorities said it was stand your ground. The major reversal tonight. And the new reports this evening about Aretha Franklin and her health. Prayers from fans around the world for the Queen of Soul. This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a very busy Monday night. And we're going to begin tonight with the flash flood emergency playing out in the Northeast as we come on tonight. Rescue teams responding to several major flood emergencies, those water rescues underway. Water rushing through Benton, Pennsylvania, Fishing Creek spilling out over its banks, flooding parts of the surrounding community there. Also, numerous roads and bridges have been washed out tonight. Homes and buildings flooded in Port Carbon, Pennsylvania. And this driver rescued in Montgomery County, his car almost entirely underwater there. There are flash flood watches in effect from Washington, D.C. up to Philadelphia, right into New York. About a thousand flights canceled at this hour. This is affecting travel coast to coast. And we start here with the dangerous driving tonight. The storms ahead this evening. ABC's Ariel Resha from Pennsylvania. Tonight, the Northeast under siege. Relentless rain swamping neighborhoods and roads. Pennsylvania drivers attempting to cross through those dangerous, fast moving waters. A powerful current whisking this camper downstream. A rescue crew desperately trying to reach this person trapped on a small island. Watch as they jump into the raft, finally reaching dry land. High water rescues across central Pennsylvania. It's just crazy how quick it came up. You know, I don't think anyone was really expecting it to be this bad. Boat after boat shuttling trapped residents to higher ground. We're down to one lane and then some. Up to four inches of rain swamping Philadelphia area highways. Crews now racing to clear mud and debris from the Schuylkill Expressway. Heavy rain deluging the region all weekend. <gasps> oh my God. More than a dozen vehicles from a Little Falls, New Jersey dealership hurled down a creek into a bridge, one by one, like bath toys. And at JFK Airport in New York, a backflow of rainwater turning baggage claim into Old Faithful. More than a thousand flights canceled tonight nationwide. And Ariel Reshef joins us live tonight from Tremont, Pennsylvania. And Ariel, this is just the latest round of punishing rain for that community. That's right, David. Residents in this area tell me this is the third time in three weeks that floodwaters have crushed their area. The homeowner here tells us it took just minutes for those waters to rise. And here you can see just how high it got. David, the mayor of this town, telling me this flooding is historic. David. And we are on the watch into the evening. Ariel, thank you. Let's get right to Chief Meteorologist Ginger Z along the Hudson River tonight. Ginger. The rain totals, David, are impressive from all around here, really. Columbia County, Pennsylvania, nearly eight inches of rain just today. Why? Because we've got all this moisture at the surface coming up along that stationary front. It's been stalled for a couple of days. and You've got a lot of energy in the upper atmosphere lifting these storms. You can see their counterclockwise rotation, those flash flood warnings on the map all around Binghamton and just around Baltimore at this hour. That's where life-threatening flooding could happen. The next 36 hours, we start to dry out, and by Wednesday, things look a lot better, but not before three to five inches falls, David. All right, I'll see you on GMA in the morning, Ginger, first thing. In the meantime, to the other major story developing late today, former West Wing advisor Amorosa, who goes all the way back to The Apprentice with the president. Well, tonight, she has now released a secret recording of the president. 
Amoroso, once one of the president's fiercest supporters, claims the recording was made the day after she was fired. You will hear what the president says tonight. She has also released her secret recording of a conversation in the Situation Room with Chief of Staff John Kelly. The president is now responding tonight, and we ask here, could Amorosa be in legal jeopardy for those recordings? Here's ABC's chief White House correspondent, Jonathan Carl. She was one of the very few White House aides close to President Trump before he got into politics. Now he's calling her wacky Amorosa, tweeting people in the White House hated her. She was vicious, but not smart. Her betrayal is so thorough, she surreptitiously taped her own firing, sneaking a recording device into the Situation Room. Hi. I'm only going to stay for a couple of minutes. These are lawyers. Um, we've got to talk to you about uh, leaving the White House. On the recording, which she released to NBC News, Chief of Staff John Kelly told her she was being fired for, quote, integrity issues. There are pretty significant uh, legal issues that we hope uh, don't develop into something that, uh, that will make it ugly for you. Uh, but I think it's important to understand that if we make this a friendly departure, um, we can all be, you know, you can look at, look at your time here in, in uh, the White House as a year of service to the nation. She tried to resist. Is the president aware of this? Uh, don't, let's not go down the road. This is a non-negotiable discussion. I don't want to negotiate. I just, I've never talked, had a chance to talk to you, General Kelly. Yeah, so if this is my departure, I'd like to have at least an opportunity no, uh, to understand. We can, we can talk another time. This has to do with some pretty serious viola integrity violations. Um, so I'll let it go with that. So uh, the, the staff and everyone on the staff works for me, not the president. The next day, she secretly recorded another conversation, this time a phone call with the president himself. Uh, Marosa, what's going on? I just saw on the news that you're thinking about leaving. What happened? General Kelly, General what Kelly happened? came to me and said that you guys wanted me to leave. No, I, I, nobody even told me about it. Nobody, wow. you know, they run a big operation, but I didn't know it. I didn't know that. Yeah. God damn it. I don't love you leaving at all. But now, a different story. Low life. She's a low life. Today, he tweeted Amorosa was, quote, nasty to people and would constantly miss meetings and work. When General Kelly came on board, he told me she was a loser and nothing but problems. I told him to try working it out if possible because she only said great things about me until she got fired. That's true. And there wasn't a peep of criticism when she sat down with ABC's Deborah Roberts days after she was fired. Do you think this president is racist? Absolutely not. I would never sit nor work for someone who I believe to be a racist. Many people see nor Donald Trump. Nor would I have continued a relationship, a friendship, a business relationship with someone for 14 years if I believe that. But soon she started turning. First on another reality TV show. You know, I'd like to say not my problem, but I can't say that because like, it's bad. And now she is flat out calling the president a racist and a bigot. I had a blind spot where it came to Donald Trump. I wanted to see the best in him. And obviously, I, I felt miserably. On Meet the Press, she said she made those recordings to protect herself. If I didn't have these recordings, no one in America would believe me, no one. John Carl with us live tonight from the White House. And John, many questions tonight about how Amorosa recorded those conversations, one in the Situation Room, one with the president. The audio was very clear. She hasn't revealed that. But John, the Situation Room is supposed to be one of the most secure places in the White House. Is she in any legal jeopardy for these secret recordings? Well, she certainly violated White House rules, David. Anybody that goes into that room is supposed to leave all electronic devices at the door. They are simply not permitted in the Situation Room by White House rules. It's unclear, though, that she broke any laws because none of this involved any classified information. David? Right. John Carl, starting another week at the White House for us. John, thank you. We're going to turn next year tonight to the latest air scare over the weekend. A man stealing a plane at the SeaTac airport, taking off and crashing and killing himself. Well, today, the story of yet another stolen plane. This time, authorities say a man stealing a jet and then intentionally flying into his own home, some of his family members inside. ABC's Kena Whitworth at the scene in Utah tonight. Oh, the whole house 
Oh my gosh. Neighbors watching, terrified as this Utah home is engulfed in flames. Do they know what happened? It's an airplane. Tonight, investigators want to know why the pilot allegedly stole that plane and intentionally crashed it into his own home. That high-pitched sound, the jet engine still running. There were two other people, occupants in the home. They weren't injured, but the pilot, 47-year-old Dwayne Yowd, died in the crash. Officials say on Sunday night, he was booked on domestic violent charges and made bail. Police say when they escorted him back to his residence after midnight, he was calm. Then two hours later, they got the call. They've got a house that's fully involved. They believe the twin engine jet belonged to Yowd's employer, his daughter tonight, shocked. I'm still in a little bit of disbelief <laughs> um, and I, it's going to be hard. David, tonight investigators are talking to his wife. They're also on scene here. Look, you can still see the tail of that plane there in the front yard. Now, this is not the first time that Yowd has faced domestic violence charges. The couple actually agreed to marriage counseling after an event earlier this year, but no word on what led him to this point. David. Kena Whitworth from Utah tonight. There was a major reversal today in that Stand Your Ground case making national headlines. You'll remember the case in Florida. A white customer angry with a black couple over where they park. The black father pushes back. The customer then shoots and kills the black father in front of his own little boy. The sheriff initially said this was stand your ground. But tonight, the state prosecutor now stepping in and charging that customer. ABC's Victor Akendo on the case again tonight from Florida. Tonight, a Florida prosecutor deciding this fatal shooting outside a convenience store was manslaughter. Police arresting Michael Draca for the death of Marquise McLaughlin. For weeks, members of the community have called for justice. Michael Draca, period point blank, is a cold-blooded murderer, and he took Marquise's life without a second thought. It all started when Draca confronted McLaughlin's girlfriend for parking in a handicapped spot while he was inside. When McLaughlin comes outside, he sees the argument and shoves Draca, who then pulls out a gun and opens fire. The father of three is seen here stumbling back into the store, his five-year-old son watching him die. It's a memory that's always going to be with my five-year-old. My three kids will be without a father. Draca claims self-defense under Florida's controversial Stand Your Ground law, and the sheriff refused to charge him. Under these circumstances, we cannot make an arrest. Now the sheriff's saying he supports the state attorney's decision. McLaughlin's family hopeful. When I got the news today, obviously I was happy. I was ecstatic about it, but, you know, I'm just sorry that it took so long. David, police say that Draca has a history of threatening other drivers. He'll appear in court tomorrow. David? Victor, thank you. The new headline tonight from the FBI, Agent Peter Strzok has now been fired. We have reported here on his text messages about then-candidate Donald Trump. Well, tonight Strzok's lawyer now says this firing comes after an internal FBI review recommended he be demoted and suspended, not fired. Strzok has come under fire from the president. Was there pressure to fire him from the White House? ABC's Chief Justice Correspondent Pierre Thomas at the FBI tonight. After months of relentless attacks from President Trump, tonight embattled FBI agent Peter Strzok fired. The president quickly showing his approval, tweeting, finally. How about that FBI agent? You think he liked me? You think there was just a little bias there? Strzok, a senior agent in the Hillary Clinton email investigation, and then the Russia probe. Special counsel Robert Mueller took him off that case after learning Strzok and former FBI attorney Lisa Page exchanged personal text messages in 2016 disparaging then-candidate Trump. Strzok repeatedly calling Trump an idiot. In one conversation, Page asks, he's not ever going to become president, right? Right? Strzok replies, no, no, he's not. We'll stop it. At no time in any of these texts did those personal beliefs ever enter into the realm of any action I took. A report from the Justice Department Inspector General found Strzok did show unprofessional bias in those texts, but found no evidence he acted upon it. Today, his attorney said an FBI internal review recommended a 60-day suspension and a demotion. Instead, Strzok was fired, the second top FBI official to be ousted after coming under fire from the president. Former Deputy Director Andrew McCabe fired in March just two days before he was eligible for his pension. So let's get to Pierre Thomas. He's with us live from the FBI tonight. And Pierre, Peter Strzok's team tonight believe this firing is because the president wanted it? 
That's right, David. Strzok's team has set up a website to raise money for his legal bills. Tonight, they're accusing the president of making...